My character is uh, the comic relief in the game, um, Sir Cadwell. He's a kind of Don Quixote character. He um, loves battle. He, he loves to go on a quest and to try and help helpless maidens and all that kind of thing. Uh, and he loves fighting, but he, he never seems to be the slightest bit scared about it. He regards it as a great game. And if he is wounded, then he's incredibly kind of brave about it in a British sort of way. This is the second worst, no, 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 this is pretty much the worst thing. <laughs> One fine day in the middle of the night, two dead kings got up to fight. Back to back they faced each other, drew their bows and stabbed themselves. I have the honest feeling we've discussed this before, or did I already mention that? No matter. I am Sir Cadwell, the undaunted Knight of the Court of Cold Harbour, champion of chivalry, defender of the defenceless, shepherd to the soul shriven. Well, this has my knickers in a twist. We have a perfectly fine army, but what good is it? Sitting around this side of the chasm, twiddling its collective thumbs. It's rather embarrassing, if truth be told. I always thought it would be wonderful to be a great archer. I think I grew up on Robin Hood and Westerns where sort of people fired guns or arrows very, very accurately. And that always appealed to me. But if you wanted to be a bowman in the, in the British Army in 1350, for example, in the Battle of Cressy, you had to start very, very young because you had to develop the most extraordinary musculature. I like it when my character, um, Sir Cadwell, gets rather vague or confused. I like it when he says, he's been asked, tell me about yourself, Cadwell. He says, I have the oddest feeling we discussed this before. Or, or, or did I already mention that? Hmm. Well, no matter. I like that kind of vagueness. I like playing that. Based on my experience with the Elder Scrolls Online, I would definitely do another video game because I had a really good laugh. And it was really fun. And, um, I'm interested to see, not that I'm very good at playing video games, I feel like I would only sort of get to the first level and never see the stuff I've done. Um, but uh, it, it, was, it was really fun, I'd definitely do it again. I like being in the dark. Um, I voice Queen Iren in this, and um, she is a queen, so she's uh, quite tough and uncompromising, but then um, seems to have uh, you know, a softer side and a humorous side. And I've enjoyed all of that stuff, uh, but I did quite like when I had to talk to it, somebody who turned into a cat, but I was a man. I've been a man as her twice, uh, and, uh, and that was quite fun. I wasn't expecting to have to do that, so it was nice. Outright traitors like Norian, we end, no question. The problem is that traitors like Norian are only fanning the flame. If I can't win over my people, the heretics will be dealing with me instead of the other way around. Your king needs to stop talking out of the side of his mouth. He has a lot of Dominion blood on his hands. We're not going to easily forget that, and we're certainly not going to fight by his side in Cold Harbor. Um, I think they will find my character is um, very fair and um, a, a very good leader, very um, imposing and um, a great warrior, but also has a kind of softer side and, um, and a very good heart and will be helpful to the player. Uh, I think my character is a very imposing leader and um, a great female, strong role model, um, but she's also somebody who has a lot of um, hardship and tragedy and betrayal going on during the video game and um, and I think that gives her um, quite a sort of sympathetic side that I think people will respond to. Video games have got better. They're much better now like The Elder Scrolls is the best way in going. I think mine's the best part because but I hope you all love it. I'm sure you will. I'll take away the love and understanding and care and I hope they take that with them. Character I'm playing is blind, and so, so I put my glasses on and I act blind. If you look very carefully, you'll see my eyes are closed, which is very clever for me to do that. And uh, then I flick them open now and again, just a little tiny bit, to read the lines 
The Elder Scrolls Online, Marks the Second Video Game. Things like that, I have to read them out loud. So how on earth they expect me to play a blind man and also speak a lot leaves me, you know, angry. I get very angry about it. Blind. Lyris, are you all right? Lyris, are you all right? How's it like that? Pretty good. Right. Indeed. But let us not get ahead of ourselves without an understanding of where we are bound. The Red Guard Swordmaster, Saisahan, leader of the Imperial Dragon Guard. In truth, I feared you'd kill me where I stood if you knew who I was. You certainly wouldn't have allied with us so readily. I caused this, all of this. If Molog Ball destroys this world, the blame will be mine and mine alone. Well, I'd like to pay an elf. That's the part I'd be really good at. Elves are quite short. I'm not short. I'm a bit overweight and not very tall, but an elf would appeal to me. They're funny. They're interesting. They climb trees. So an elf would be my sort of thing. I'd be an elf. Also, yet they have the added advantage, elves, of sitting down a lot. I love sitting down. If you played a king or a, a, some duke or something, you have to keep walking around. I don't do that. So I, I'd be happy to play an elf. I like the Elder Scrolls. I'm tailor-made for the part. And uh, I'm used to playing blind men. I've all, in fact, I always play blind men. I enjoy it very much. The character I play in the Elder Scrolls is called Abnathan. The best way to describe him would be supremely confident and arrogant. A man who clearly has a very, very high opinion of himself and a very low opinion of others, which is even more crucial. There's this ongoing sense of him being very sarcastic and very aloof. He, he, he doesn't quite believe that anyone can be as powerful or as strong or as decisive as he is or as they need to be. So there's always this little tension of, of trying to, you know, he's very sparing with his compliments but very generous with his, with his sarcasm. I know more about the Daedra than any man or mer alive. For good or ill, my family has always kept ties with the forces of oblivion and this much I know. One cannot kill a Daedric prince. But we have the Amulet of Kings. So, we're to stumble blindly into the catacombs beneath a crumbling ruin abandoned for an age. Lovely. That bearded idiot swordmaster will lead us straight into a trap, no doubt. It's my small-minded nephew, Javad. The lad was petty and cruel for the enjoyment of it. I always suspected he'd meet an untimely end. Leave him to his fate. It's kinder than he deserves. And then what? I've no idea what will happen to you. Apotheosis? Disintegration? Too many unknowns and not enough information. But if you defeat Molag Baal and survive, your soul and the soul of every other surviving vestige should be restored. The Amulet of Kings is a relic of Akatosh, the dragon god of time. His powers embody the qualities of perseverance and invincibility, while promoting the virtues of duty, service, and obedience. Make of that what you will. One of the big elements in the character is that he's 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 very very you know sort of very pompous and very arrogant, but he's actually very funny, and he, he his 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 sarcasm and his kind of sort of dismissal of other people can be really. I mean, there's one line where. Uh, he's talking to Lyris, and he's, he says something like, you know, in a very kind of understanding and supportive and sympathetic way, he says, you know, something like, I understand this must be very hard for you, Lyris, but don't be an idiot. Something like that. And, either, and it's just that, I mean, I'm, I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember the line now, um, but... Uh, it's, it was the it was the turn of phrase that because it, so, it started off so kind of like like a he was just about to give her a hug, and then it turns into this kind of like wonderful slap and slap in the face, and, and it was that 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 way of just turning within a line, turning everything around like that it was very indicative of him. But that line in particular, so, you know, you know, it must be very as hard as it might be for you, Lyris, Don't be an idiot. Kind of made me laugh. 
The character I play in The Elder Scrolls Online is King Emmerich, and he's a good guy, generally speaking. What's cool about him is that he's not uncomplex. He does have his bad days, and he gets into all kinds of uh, moods. But he's generally in the in the context within the context of the Elder Scrolls Online. He is a good force of, in the world. He has some funny lines. He's not just some king guy. He also is a human being, and he has some uh, he has some funky asides to make. And he is uh, he is the king of all Rivenspire. And he's a pretty cool guy, in my view. I'm not just defending my character. I actually believe that. I, uh, he's very, very, he's a serious hands-on king. He doesn't hang around in throne rooms telling other people how to fight battles. He's out there. He's on horseback. He's getting bloody. He doesn't fool around. And he's never lost a battle, as far as I know, which just right there is pretty cool. I will not wager the future of my people on the word of a snow barbarian and an adolescent female. I fear for Tamriel's future if either of you were to sit upon the ruby throne. This crown, one day I will throw this crown in a lake. This crown was probably great for my grandfather. This crown looks tawdry. Why can't they shine it up now and again? Everyone's so scared to touch the crown. They could at least clean it. This crown makes me look stupid. It sits on my ears. My ears are not my best feature. <laughs> Can't they tighten this crown slightly? I'm blinded by it if I'm riding on a horse. This crown is an embarrassment to the kingdom. He has many, many wonderful lines. I like his epithets, perhaps best. I like, I loved saying, you know, don't go easy on me. It's, you know, I, I, I'm being honest. I, I, I got a kick out of saying, on Mara's bosom. I like it when things get daft. It means you're not being a nuisance in the world. It means you're doing something actually in a kind of, uh, you know, funky way that's useful and you're not, you know, invading Iraq. So I'm hoping they come to me with a warm feeling. And I hope that by the time they leave, they feel a whole lot better. I say encouraging stuff. I point them in the right direction. I don't sell them any uh, nonsense. And uh, I'm generally on the player's side. And it's also part of my job, I have to say, that if they do anything wrong in the game, I get to tell them. But then that's, it's tough being a king. And, and the crown doesn't fit because my great, 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 great grandfather apparently must have had a very small head. So I get a lot of crown aches. I like the variety of things you have to achieve vocally. I like the fact that it's concentrated into a relatively short period of time. I've had a very pleasant time working with the people here. Uh, I'm in Paris, I have to come clean, and it's, uh, it's a beautiful summer's day. The character that I'm playing in The Elder Scrolls, or as we like to say, the Scrolls. Uh, <clears throat> those of them as a part of the family, you know. Um, well, of course, I am playing an arch villain, and um, but as I always say, you know, a piece is only as good, often, as its villain. And I think this one is uh, particularly nasty, actually. Um, I think he's going to beat up the uh, player of the game quite nicely. Um, and, and by the way, he's not really very polite, which I do like about him. I'm from the north of England, we're rather gruff in the north of England, and, and I like that. No nonsense, right to it. Um, but does he have a heart? Of course he does, yes. I mean, a villain without a heart would be a sad, sad thing. So we try and give him some, some vulnerability. I don't quite know what it is, but... And do I enjoy playing them? Of course I do. I mean, I'd much rather play the heavy than the hero. Submit to the will of Molag Bal. Fall to your knees and worship me. I don't need to kill you. I just need you to wish you were dead. I grow weary of your games, Mother dear. I grow weary of your games, Mother dear. I am God of Oblivion. You are less than nothing. I will have you, Vestige. Pathetic prophecies and trinkets of holy powers are fleeting. I am immortal. I am undying. 
Your world will drown in blood. All of none shall be mine. I would hope, though, that, that people will go, wow, that guy was pretty cool. I don't want them to emulate what he's doing or saying even, but just, you know, he's got to be this threat. And, and uh, you know, I hope there's a little bit of humor there somewhere. He's one of those characters. He's really a beloved and sweet guy. Underneath all that, your black heart pleases me, mortal. I'll leave you with a gift. And one day, you will repay me with your soul. Yes, well, the character that I'm playing in the Elder Scrolls is uh, Molag Bal, or Little Mo for short. He's actually, um, how can I put this? He's a, I hate to use this word, but it's the only word that really describes him, a demon god. I think that actually video games, um, they lend themselves beautifully for movies, don't they? Um, there's a lot of them about. I'm Malcolm McDowell, and we've been working on The Elder Scrolls. And I'm playing the part of Little Mo. He's an evil bastard. <laughs>